Howdy. My name is Bud Mason and I'm with the Rural Community Assistance Partnership. We're here today to discuss the duties of an operator. Your operator, believe it or not, does more than just sit at the coffee shop. There's daily rounds, day-to-day -day operation and maintenance of the system, as well as evening checks and the occasional emergency call-out. But there's more to it than that. Your operator is also the caretaker of your system, and your system is the biggest asset your community owns. But again, he's just the caretaker. You as a board member are the owner. So it's your duty to make sure your operator has the proper financial capability to be able to perform his job at a maximum level. It's every community's responsibility to ensure that their residents have a safe drinking water supply, along with having a system to ensure that the water leaving the community going back into the environment is safe as well. The person that is most critical in that role is your operator. My name is Jim Earlywine. The role of the operator can vary from community to community depending on what the community and the operator decide to do. Weekly sampling is required. Samples have to be taken to a lab and be analyzed and then uh, monthly reports have to be done. If a pump goes down, you got to figure out what's wrong. Did you lose power? The grass has to be cut. Weeds need to be controlled. General maintenance issues. If the plant isn't operated properly, eventually it'll get to the point that it will require major work, major expense, major everything to get it so that you're putting good effluent out to the creek. An operator watches over the equipment and the process in a, in a facility. They take measurements and readings, make sure the equipment is operating properly, that the organisms are doing their job so we have a safe product to uh, put out into the stream. Being a water treatment plant operator is hands-on. Um, you really have to pay attention to what you're doing and the surroundings and you learn actually being here. Come in and check our pressures and our tanks and we start up our raw intake. Then we go through our treatment process by checking all of our chemicals and making sure they're properly filled and all the pumps are working correctly. And then we do water tests throughout the day to make sure that our chemicals are reacting the way they should and that our water is being produced at the highest quality it can be made. You need mechanical aptitude, you need mathematics, you need science, common sense, because you use it all when you're in the job. Be smelling for strange odors, they'll be looking for things that are, that are strange, listening for things, um, and in the process they do troubleshooting to make sure things, if they're not quite right, functioning properly, what's, what's going on with them. A lot of chemistry and a lot of algebra. Uh, we use formulas throughout the day very heavily. Uh, everything we have has a formula to it, and you can't really figure anything out unless you have a formula to get that final answer. We like to bring somebody in as a as a trainee with no real knowledge. I mean, they, they it'd be nice if they have some math and science background, but we bring them in and we we take them under our wing and we train them all the way up. And and if they take schooling or we provide some t some uh, instruction and get their licenses and train them here on the job. But there are some courses out there where you can take all the courses to get a degree in water and waste water management and then you have the skill set to get to find a, a job. I just recently got certified. I'm a class three operator. I had to go through four, four days, three days of schooling. The fourth day was test day. Um, it was a hundred question test and it was over regulations, uh, treatment process and everything that pertained to it thereafter. Our federal government passes a lot of rules and regulations concerning how we treat our wastewater in this country. Those rules and regulations are passed down to the state and local communities. And at the local communities, that's where the rubber meets the road. We're standing outside of a courthouse today to discuss your legal responsibility of operating a wastewater treatment plant. Why a courthouse, you ask? Because ignoratia juris non excusant, or for you less sophisticated folks, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. The net result of the Clean Water Act and related federal regulations is that almost all community wastewater treatment plants now provide at least secondary treatment, with increasingly more systems providing some sort of advanced treatment. Failure to comply can lead to legal action. It's up to you to comply. Be informed, be engaged, be a leader. Inside most city halls, you'll find hanging on their bulletin board a copy of their MPDES permit. 
That permit was usually hung there when the permit was either issued or renewed as part of the public notification process. Inside that permit, you'll find the list of requirements that the wastewater leaving the wastewater treatment plant needs to meet to maintain compliance with all rules and regulations. I like being an operator because it gets me involved in a lot of things in the community. I've always been a small town person. It allows me to help the people in the community that have no understanding of any of this, what it takes. We're doing a good job. We're taking care of what they and my taxpayer money was spent on so that we feel like it's going to last a long time. It's just good to know that we're doing our part to help the environment. This started out as a job and ended up to be a career path. I mean, I, when I first started working here, I didn't think I'd be here after 31 years. And it's just turned into a career. I love my job, I really do. It's a good job that you can count on not going nowhere. It's a job that you can feel proud of at the end of the day. Uh, you, can, you know that at the end of the day, you're keeping other kids and other families safe. I mean, I have a family of my own, and I want to make sure that they're getting the best water possible, and I like to make sure everybody else is getting the same opportunity. We're protecting one of man's most important resources, and that's water. We're looking at, we're guardians of the environment the best we can. It takes a proper technical, managerial, and financial capabilities to properly operate a wastewater system. We hope this video is helpful in you understanding the technical, which is your operator, what roles and responsibilities they have, and what a key player they are in the operations of your wastewater system. This is Bud Mason with the Rural Community Assistance Partnership.